Texas A&M is in fact the real deal. And they left no doubt last night in College Station over LSU. Final score, A&M 38, LSU 23. A couple of thoughts here off the jump. One, 12th man's a real thing. There was a lot of people that were questioning Kyle Field when those College Football 25 stadium rankings came out or the home advantage came out. Uh, That was a real deal, intense stadium pulse last night that impacted the game in a major way. Third largest crowd at Kyle Field in history. That's massive, and that impacted the game, like I just mentioned. Second thought here, those black unis, I got a lot of heat on Twitter for saying this last night, but I'll say it right now. Those, I believe, are the standard setters across college football for what black unis should be. Now, I'm not saying if you have a black uniform and you're not a Texas A&M fan that it's not a good uniform, but I'm just saying what I saw last night, a little script on the helmet, that was fresh. So why is A&M the real deal? We'll unpack it right now. Make sure you're subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. We appreciate you being dialed in. If you're a Texas A&M fan, I love Tex Ags. They do the Lord's work at Tex Ags. But also make sure you're subscribed here because we're going to talk a lot about your Aggies here going forward. Also follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, at JD Paquel, and get after me there because we picked against your Aggies. Picked against them. Hand up. It's on us. We take accountability for that. We were wrong. So Texas A&M fans, hey, if you want to bring the heat, bring it on Twitter, bring it on social media because, hey, like I said, we were off base there. I will say this, if Connor Wegman stays in the game, maybe things turn out differently. But guess what? He didn't stay in the game. And credit Mike Elko for having the guts to make that kind of a pivot at that point in time to uh, get his football team in a position to then ultimately take over the football game and win. So here's what I want to say. Um, There's nothing fluky about who Texas A&M is right now. Nothing. And it's sort of hard for us to optically get on board with at times because you're like, wait a second. First year head coach, they switched quarterbacks. Like, who is a? They lost the first game of the year. Like, are we sure we can trust them? Yes, you can trust them because they do the things that good football teams do. Let's go down the line here. Did they stop the run? Yep. LSU has, I believe, uh, an NFL offensive line or at least multiple players on the on the offensive line that will go to the NFL. Uh, they averaged one yard a carry last night, less than thirty yards rushing. Uh, they ran the football effectively. The Texas A and M. For a smooth 242 yards on the ground. Anytime you go over 200 yards on the ground, you're going to have a good chance to win the football game. All right? uh, got after the quarterback in critical moments. I mentioned the LSU offensive line. They had been extremely stingy throughout the course of the season. You had two key sacks on Garrett Nussmeyer that uh, ultimately allowed that game to finish the way that it finished for AM. and And I think what Mike Elko said in his post-game press conference that made its way around social media, and I thought it was awesome. I I mean, I I absolutely loved the heck out of it. This is a lot of substance behind Mike Elko and A&M. And he said that. He's like, listen, this is a real program. It's not fake. It's not a politician talking fast. Like, like, this is a real program. Kind of making his pitch to recruits, which I thought was another genius move by Mike Elko. Um, But going back to what I was saying, the substance behind what A&M is right now is I think a massive part as to why you're seeing them play the brand of football they're playing. And not to dunk on the previous regime, but you hadn't seen this level of substance and toughness and discipline and all those things. Like previously, it was a lot of preseason hype, a lot of excitement from the 2020 season and what you did that year and talking about, well, hey, if this falls our way and we can get this thing to break our way, we win this game, then maybe we can find a way to win these other games. Like there's no hoping, wishing, forecasting like you should have a lot of confidence in house and college station because of what Mike Elko brings to the table everything you hired him for from Duke he is bringing to the table in year one the first year he's, he's the head coach at AM. he has brought those things to the table that typically in my estimation take right around two to three years that was my whole thing I was telling AM fans going into the year you hired the right guy let it marinate let it bake I would still let it marinate, still let it bake, but like, y'all don't look now, but A&M is unbeaten in the SEC. At this point in time, I'd be surprised if they don't make the SEC title game and in that way make the college football playoff. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's go back to the game itself, though. We said it on social media last night as soon as the game ended. Not the reason to be following me there because I'll give you instant reactions on Instagram and on Twitter at J.D. Uh, This is Marcel Reed's team right now, Okay. We have been on record saying we think he gives them the best chance to win. We said that post-Florida, said that post-Arkansas. You saw that again last night. And I understand now that Connor Wegman, on paper, 
probably makes more sense in some ways because he's the high profile guy at a high school. He's played more football. If you were to line him up and have a pro day, like I don't know exactly how it would all shake out, but I think Connor Webb would probably look pretty impressive. This is Marcel Reed's team. There is no going back to Connor Wegman. And that's not me speaking ill of Connor Wegman, but with what you have right now and what he did last night, I don't know how you go back to 15. Like Marcel Reed is your guy. And the thing that I loved about Marcel Reed, and we've talked about what he does from a skill set perspective. We'll talk about that more in a second. But we talk a lot about Cam Ward from Miami on this show being a psychopath. Like the moment just never looks like it impacts him. Whether it's fourth and goal and you know, the game to go, or whether it's you know a walkthrough on a Thursday before the game or on a Friday before the game, like he looks like it's that kind of tempo for him all the time. Marcel Reed, like I mentioned, gets tapped into the game when his team is down in front of over a hundred thousand people. I mean, he looks like he's out for a walk in the park. He's just out there playing ball, and like the, the fact that he's so poised, I think, is something that one, continues to give you confidence in him. Two, when your quarterback's confident, I can promise you that radiates throughout the entire offense. That radiates throughout the entire football team. Hey, the guy pulling the trigger who's touching the football every single snap, he's not flinching. He's not nervous. He's got a resting heart rate. Okay, we're going to be in good shape here. And so for Marcel Reed to step into that spot last night and yet again show that level of poise and confidence and just awareness and to ball out the way he did, like, that's your guy. This is his team now. If it wasn't his team before, this is his team now. And you heard him handle himself so well in the postgame as well. Like, this is your guy. All right? Uh, you saw what he is as a playmaker. And this is the thing we've said for a long time, too. Going back to the previous spots we saw him in against Arkansas, against Florida. Yes, he had a big night last night running the football. Had three touchdowns. And, I mean, if you're not going to stop him, LSU, like, he's going to do what he does. So, I mean, get it how you live. But for Marcel Reed, it's what he does with other playmakers. It's the way that he elevates a Le'Veon Moss. It's the way that he elevates the pass game downfield. Because at some point in time now, you start to second guess. I mean, we saw this last night. Whenever Marcel Reed was in that spot where there was a mesh with the handoff and, and the linebackers are trying to figure out, okay, is Marcel Reed going to tuck it and run or is it a give? You could see there was a half second of hesitation. That's all it takes. A half second of hesitation for a guy like Le'Veon Moss getting downhill, that's like a good six-yard head start for that guy. That's massive, and so you don't want to have to tackle that guy with a six-yard head start, full momentum, head of steam, getting downhill. Again, you don't have to worry about that with Wegman in the game. I'm not trying to dunk on Connor Wegman. I'm just telling you the facts here. He changes the complexion of the offense. And we saw it last night, too, in the pass game. Steps in there, you, you try and account for the run, he's throwing bombs downfield for you. Like, that's, I think, something we'll see more of as the offense evolves around him and as teams try to address for what he does on the ground. You're going to see teams try and bring a safety down to try and account for what he does with his legs. At that point in time, then it's deep shots downfield. And uh, Kirk Herbstreet, obviously calling the game last night, obviously the GOAT in the space, saw Marcel Reed play a lot in high school. Marcel Reed from the Nashville area, I believe he played with Kirk Herbstreet's kids. At the very least, he played at the same high school as his kids. Bottom line, Kirk Herbstreet seen this dude play football, and he made a point in the post game as they were unpacking what happened in, on Kyle Field. He's like, hey, no, no, this dude's not just like a good athlete playing quarterback. Like, if you want to try to take away his legs, you can do that. But, like, he can real deal hurt you downfield. So I'll take Kirk Herbstreet's word for it. I think we all would be wise to do that. The bottom line here, Marcel Reed is a – shot of caffeine to the offense. Like, yes, there's other playmakers within it that are able to help you and make plays downfield, and we talk about the run game and the offensive line, but, like, when you have a real deal playmaker at quarterback that elevates everyone around you, you feel a little bit different as a defensive coordinator prepping for AM now with Marcel Reed. Heck, as a fan, I got to believe whenever 10 drops back, like, okay, we, we got a chance now. We got a chance, even if that first play isn't there. The second play is there. Even if it's not there originally, it, it, when he starts to ad lib and you got to cover Noah Thomas for three, four seconds at a time, good things happen. Good things happen. So again, this is, this is Marcel Reed's team. Here's the exciting part about that. As good as Marcel Reed has played in limited spots, and I get AM fans just saying, well, the Arkansas game, we didn't see and totally tear it up. I'm just saying, as good as he has played, as your guy, 
you still don't know exactly how good he can be, right? Like this is this is still his first real chunk of games where he's going to be your guy for you here going forward. And so what I'm trying to say here is I think they're going to tailor the offense more to him. Colin Klein thrives with the mobile quarterback. That's the offense he wants to call. And without Marcel Reed, I think we've seen now A&M can be a top third of the SEC kind of team. You point to the game against Mississippi State, and Mississippi State is what it is. The game against Missouri, where you absolutely body bag them at the crib. We've seen what A&M can be with this roster. We've seen the floor, I believe, of how good they can be. But you add in Marcel Reed, there's a brand new ceiling to what they can be, in my opinion. With that defensive line, with that run game, with defenses now having to figure out how to account for what he does on the ground, like this is a brand new operation, a brand new approach. So with that being said now, there's a massive uh, variable of like, ain't no telling with A&M in that offense. Ain't no telling with now this explosive element. Ain't no telling with the poise that he brings to the table. So all those things to consider, man, with what Mike Elko has installed with the, the, the traits that you hired him for, showing itself in year one, to have a confidence-building win last night over a good LSU football team, a top-10 LSU football team, and to be undefeated in the SEC, to have one loss to a Notre Dame team that, like, don't look now, they keep on winning now, does Notre Dame. Uh, A&M's in, in a good spot. So the rest of the way now, the games that you are uh, you know, looking most closely at, at South Carolina, at Auburn, two tricky road tests. Okay, South Carolina, good defensive line. It's going to be a great test next week. And then you got Texas to finish the season in College Station. And that, I would have to believe, is like the spectacle of the rivalry weekend. I cannot wait for that one. Again, you go 2-1 and one in that stretch. Hear me clearly. A&M should go at least 2-1 and one in that stretch. Who's to say they don't go undefeated in that stretch? Uh, they will be in Atlanta. And they will be, obviously, in the college football playoff. So again, A&M fans, hey, hand up. It's on me. From me to you, uh, Paul, hey, cheers. This is uh, me drinking some some pre-workout here in, as a apology or, or a, a olive branch, I suppose. Thank you for being dialed in. Appreciate you being subscribed. Uh, a lot ahead of you now here if you are a Texas a fan. All right, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time.